express gratitude and how greatly we have touched people's lives through God's grace and spiritual guidance. This is a day that means a lot to those fortunate enough to have known you, share your time, and gain wisdom with your words and actions. As our own little tribute, we don't want to go through all the details of your life. More than anyone, you will know better and deeper. But there is something else you need to know as your life continues to unfold. In your own simple way, you have brought so many hearts and minds to the light of God's love. This is the story of how you brought us into that light. Because you like giving away your shoes and clothes to beggars who would pass by the ancestral house. It was a wood's house, and each child was assigned a nanny. Your parents were some parties and lived the good life. But there is one vision in that house that will somehow define your life. It is a vision of a family gathered around the Blessed Virgin Mother every day to pray the Rosary. It is a vision of a mother who would raise children through piety and devotion to create harmony in the family through prayer. You know my mother is a Spanish mestiza, strict. She was strict. Very strict, and her house is like a monastery. I see. Okay. At four o'clock, all of us should rise and should pray the rosary. In the morning? In the morning, when we are all sleepy. You see, you sleep again, <laughs> but now it is time for us to pray. Mm -hmm. But all our prayers were all in Spanish. I see. Because according to my mother, God only understands Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and then we pray. And then comes the Trisayo. Trisayo is a prayer invoking the Holy Trinity. Santo, 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 just the los ejercitos. Uh -huh. And then after that, the whole day, my mother was always dedicating herself to charities. Uh -huh. Because my father is the one earning money, my mother gives them away. <laughs> oh, that's right. And any poor people whom he see, he will say, come here. Then he would give the dresses. Mm -hmm. Then he would give food and money. That is my mother. And every night, you can see around 100 people with bowls asking for supper, porridge. And my mother includes them in the cooking. This rosary is always in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And that is why I have this here in my pocket because it gives me joy to hold this when there is problem. And therefore I was able to unite the clergy of Manila. When I came here, there was the mission. Mm -hmm. Because of the rosary, you see, the chain of the rosary is so united. I said, dear lady, help me to unite my clergy mm -hmm. in order that we can bring people to God. Mm -hmm. This rosary is indeed mysterious. Mm -hmm. And so I pray this every day, every morning. Sometimes, many times in the car when you have to wait because of the traffic. Yes, that's instead right. Instead of getting mad, you bring the rosary. Behind the success of every child in your family is the lesson your mother and you know told you. Turn to God, turn to prayer, turn to the blessed mother. It is one lesson we would always try to impart to others. We were a monsignor in Howard in Wilo when we started making an impression among church officials, especially those in the Vatican. Wilo is said to be good in management, 
when people heard about your skills and wisdom in straightening the affairs of the Diocese of Haro. The right choice at the right time. That's what your colleagues at the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines said when you were soon appointed Archbishop of Manila. As leader of the Church, you were firm and gentle, intense and humorous, exacting and approachable. The most important here is the talk that I had with Reagan, President Reagan. Oh, he called you by phone, did he? He called me by phone through the American Embassy. I was able to more or less convince them that there is a need of the helicopter because it will be very sad if our people will kill the person. So you were responsible for asking well, them to say but that. But then Mr. Reagan does not like Marcos to go to Hawaii. Oh really? So he wanted Marcos to go to Honduras. Because oh, yes. it is in Central America. Yes. And because he foresaw that uh, there will be some problems. So yes, he's an embarrassment to them now. And now, what happened? After five minutes, I was talking to the president of the US. <laughs> and he talked to me in Spanish. I said, well, Buenos Dias, Buenos Dias. And then he said, we have decided not to receive him here. We must be seguido de more acceptable in nuestro país. Sin embargo, si tú me pides, vamos a consentir. So if you asked him, he would be considered. Considered. And then, I was thinking, why should I ask him? <laughs> <laughs> Can President Reagan not do that? Then I answered him in a very classical Spanish. Now can you tell me in Honduras? The right choice at the right time. These words ring loud and true, especially during the dark years of the martial law regime. In those days, to protest against the government practically meant suicide. But you were said to have been responsible for writing the first open letter of protest against martial law. Of course, it would be followed by no protests against immorality and abuse of power. You were unafraid to go against the most fearsome figures in the country because you knew you were only doing what is right. You brought us to life in the sense that we learned to value charity over wealth, service over power, love of neighbor over love of self. Much has been said about the separation of the church and the state, about how the church should never involve itself with political matters. But how can somebody like you not get involved when things get out of hand and it's all a matter of life and death for the Filipino people? How can you forget your voice on the radio in February of 1986? Your call for people to protect the rebels in times stronger and undeniable was crucial. In fact, it was so crucial that it triggered the fall of the Marcos dictatorship. Let us pray together. Let us not allow a drop of blood to be shed. If we can solve this problem peacefully, that would be the best. For Filipinos both young and old, it was a great time to witness the return of democracy. It was time of change never before seen in recent history. It was a peaceful, bloodless revolution. Months back, you had already condemned the results of the snap elections. And even before that, in 1983, you condemned the assassination of Nino Aquino. It was your strongly worded protests that helped make EDSA 1986 possible. 
Among the many unforgettable scenes in Exa 86, the one that easily stands out is that of people holding their rosaries and praying before the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. They wouldn't have done that if you probably didn't say so. That makes you a peaceful activist, not a passive religious leader who just preached and left to God the pain of the people. You brought us to light by helping us make a stand to fight tyranny and injustice, always the hope in our hearts, a prayer in our lips, and a rosary and a flower in our hands. We, the bishops of the Philippines, made that statement because we thought the children of God were being oppressed by harm. The children of God were our children and we had to defend them. And we now call the priests and the sisters and the seminarians and all the people out to Elsa. I do this to prevent bloodshed. Wesley Marcus was my parishioner. General Fabio Rivera was my parishioner. Johnny Ponce Rivini and Fidel Ramos were my parishioners. I would not stand by and watch them annihilate each other. I called all of the children of God out to Elsa to say the flat that God had given me. As men, thousands of young men, in 1995, millions of people they are to tell the world that God's love. Young people joy. from around the world came to Manila to celebrate World Youth Day with Pope John Paul II. The, the, the Holy Father himself was amazed at was how we were able to gather what is probably the biggest part for a worldwide celebration. I take with me a thousand images of the Filipino people. I know you desire for greater justice and a better life for yourselves and your children. No one can underestimate the difficulties you, you face and the hard work that lies ahead. Above all, no one should pull back from the great amount of real and effective solidarity, a new solidarity between individuals in families and throughout the society. There has to be progress in sharing there has to be a renewed sense of responsibility of everyone for everyone. We are, each of us, our brother's keeper. May God help you to follow the path you have already begun towards a continuing development that preserves and promotes the true values of your Filipino culture. Even those who want to understand the meaning of the event felt the excitement of everyone who went to the Meta. And everybody saw how much you love the youth, like the Holy Father does. In the succeeding years, we also made preparations for the celebration of Jubilee 2000. You have organized the Year of the Eucharist, the Year of the Holy Spirit, and the Year of God the Father. All of them had a common purpose, bring back the presence of Christ in the family and in society. Our bishops call us to wage a counter-offensive against this double demoralization and that counter-offensive must begin in our hearts and in our families. Like charity, it must begin at home.
But like charity, it must not end there. We must make our families centers, cells, or a noble hope. A hope that will restore a sense of common purpose. A sense that if we, all of us, work together to overcome our divisions with God's help, our nation can be renewed, our nation can rise from the depths of its present crisis. It is not money that we need, it is the moral regeneration. The place of call to preserve the family. We have come to reaffirm our fidelity to the law of the Creator, the law of Christ the natural law of love and life. I have been continuously attacked in the newspaper, but this is not my law. God sent me here to protect His law, and I am happy when I am attacked, because I am fulfilling my duty. I believe in God, the Father, and my Creator, You brought us to life. Inspiring the youth to make a difference and learn to be morally upright citizens. You are so formal every time you celebrate the Mass. You look very holy and respectable. People listen hard each time you speak, but people like you because you can make them laugh. You are a good and nice person. They are even better than the superheroes and action stars kids watch on TV. You are some kind of new idol. There are children who want to be like you when they grow up. You brought us to life by making people see themselves as servants of the Lord and active members of the church. Most recently, your energy and presence had a lot to do with the success of the Fourth World Meeting of Families. Indeed, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all to Manila as we commence this morning, the Fourth World Meeting of Families. It gives me a sense of holy pride as a Filipino and Archbishop of Manila that the Philippines in general and the Archdiocese of Manila in particular is once more chosen by the Holy Father to host such event of great ecclesial significance, not only for the local church in the Philippines, but to the universal church at large. We sincerely thank His Holiness Pope John Paul II for choosing Manila. This gesture is again a manifestation of His deep paternal love for us Filipinos, granting us this remarkable prevalence is a grace and a challenge. Well, we could go on and on, remembering the times you have brought light to many people. Certainly, there were lessons learned from those moments. When I was a boy seven years old, I knew that I wanted to be a priest, even until now. And if I die and God offered to put me back on earth for another life, I would still want to be a priest. It is the most beautiful, the most meaningful, the best decision I ever made. It is a good thing to be a priest. I am grateful to God that He chose me to be a priest as a bishop. A priest is a bridge between God and man. A priest is a channel of grace between God and children of God. Sometimes we have not a very good bridge. Sometimes we have not a very good channel. But we try. And so at this time I am deeply grateful to God that he has given me to you as a bridge, as a channel of his love, as a channel of his peace, as a channel of grace. And I am grateful that he has given you to me as my food, my flock, 
by children, the children of God. More than anything else, we are so blessed to have shared this lifetime with you. It is through your warm and loving presence that the light of Christ constantly shines upon us. What else can we say? We can only wish that more people would get a chance to experience your wonderful person.